Hey Roadrunner viewers, Tom Rodrick here. Today we are reviewing the 2022 BMW F900R. For more reviews like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. It was late April when I sidestanded the 2022 BMW F900R in front of Crystal Lake Cafe in Azusa, California. Large piles of snow were abundant but melting rapidly, remnants of the atmospheric river that defined the winter of 2022 in California. A fellow motorcyclist noticed the dealer plates the F900R was wearing and asked if I was on an extended test ride. Sort of, I replied, explaining the bike in my possession wasn't a part of the corporate test fleet the BMW Motorrad semi-trailer had brought to Long Beach BMW Motorcycles. He asked how the F900 was performing. I said it was a nice bike, but that I was wrestling to square some of its inconsistencies. He laughed when I added that its engine sounded like an industrial knitting machine upset at its lot in life. As an owner of an older model, R1200 RS, he was uniquely interested in my insights, but at that moment, I hadn't fully formed an opinion. I hope he's watching this video now. Looking for more exciting motorcycle travel, editorial, reviews, news, and resources for planning your next motorcycle tour? Roadrunner. Located in a Roadster section of the BMW Motorrad website, the F900R shares its stable with the R1250R, the S1000R, and G310R. They are all motorcycles with minimal body work that balance performance with everyday usability. In BMW's words, they offer, quote, sporty front wheel oriented ergonomics. A half truth, in my opinion, regarding the F900R. From the waist up, the F900R exhibits a comfortable reach to the bar with a modest forward lean, putting the rider in control while not inducing uncomfortable amounts of pressure on the wrists. Below the seat, however, it didn't take long for me to notice a growing discomfort in my hip sockets from some very high-placed foot pegs. On one hand, I was able to manage superbike levels of lean angle without touching down a single hard part. On the other hand, the F900 isn't meant to be a superbike, so why not lower the pegs a tad and open up the bottom half of the cockpit? The seat height of the F900R is a very average 32 inches. To help solve the legroom problem, BMW's accessory catalog has an optional high seat, comfort seat, an extra high seat that raise the seat height to 32.8, 33, and 34 inches respectively. For riders desiring less seat height, BMW offers a low seat that reduces the seat height to 31.1 inches. When used in conjunction with the optional suspension lowering kit, you can further bring a seat height down to 30.3 inches. A 10% drivetrain loss from the claimed 99 crank horsepower of the F900 leaves approximately 90 horses spinning the rear wheel on a bike weighing a claimed 465 pounds fully fueled. The weight of the fuel matters little because the F900R only carries about 20 pounds of gasoline. On average, you'll get about 115 miles from the 3.4 gallon tank before you start looking to refuel. The tank runs dry at about 135 miles. The range of my 1999 Honda Superhawk was a little worse, and I survived owning it, but it sure seems that BMW could have squeezed more range from the F900R's fuel tank without imposing upon rider comfort. The 895cc parallel twin powering the F900R generates a healthy torque curve, about 67 pound-feet at 6500 RPM, and revs to redline without complaint. When compared to the likes of Yamaha's XSR900, which has less displacement and curb weight but more horsepower, I wonder why BMW couldn't have done better. I was told by an onlooker that the exhaust note was pleasing and not deafening. Atop the motorcycle, the outbound sound is muted by the clickety-clack of a feverishly working valve train, a sound more akin to an air-cooled rather than a liquid-cooled engine. In the stopping department, the BMW's front four-piston radially mounted calipers and dual 320mm Floating discs seem overzealously willing to slow down a motorcycle of such tame acceleration. It's always better to have more stopping power than too little, so, other than stock brake pads that are a little too grabby for my taste, no complaints here. Boasting an MSRP of $8,995 for a nearly liter-sized motorcycle is at first glance a good deal, but then you realize that all the technology you really desire are part of the premium package which bumps the retail price by $2,500 to $11,495. If you want the model pictured here, plan on spending an additional $300 on the Style Sport package and $150 on the center stand, bringing the total price to $11,945. Is what you get worth the bump in price? Yes. Like the engine versus braking imbalance, the non-adjustable fork seems an odd match for an electronically dynamic shock. Having said that, 
The non-adjustability certainly helps reduce costs and the fork is commendably sorted in both compression and rebound functions. During my riding, I couldn't fault the fork or the shock, regardless of whether I was forcing the F900R through a tight corner or traveling down the freeway. A surprise I found a few clicks into the settings is an optional sport view for the color TFT screen. Like other TFT screens, it changes the configuration of the tack and speedo, but it also allows riders to see in real time how much traction control is being used, how much brake pressure is being applied, and what lean angle you're getting to in the corner. Very fun information to play with during a spirited jaunt down your favorite twisty two-laner. To my surprise, during our photo shoot session, I saw a lean angle of 49 degrees on the TFT screen, which is impressive for a street bike wearing street tires. That figure may be a little optimistic by a few degrees, but the fact remains that the F900 didn't touch down a single hard part while doing it. That is great for cornering clearance, but not so great for my achy hip joints. I'd gladly trade a few degrees of lean angle for more space between the seat and foot pegs. If you're able to find a base model F900R for its $8,995 retail price, consider it a unicorn and buy it immediately. That's a good deal for a new 900cc BMW motorcycle. Most likely, however, what you'll find is a model outfitted as the one I tested, which at nearly $12,000 is up against some seriously sportier competition, such as KTM's 890 Duke R. I suggest asking your local dealer when the BMW Motorrad semi-trailer with the corporate test fleet will be in town and taking the F900R and a bunch of other models for extended test rides. So that's my review on the BMW F900R. I hope you enjoyed it. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe.